Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm really glad that you can join us again. Um, before I introduce Elspeth, I just want to say a couple of things. There will be a handout for these sessions, and I'll say that again at the end. So the session that I gave, you will receive a handout after the event. And also, I just want to remind you about the competition, the Facebook, Twitter, social media competition, which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, if you post a comment on our Facebook or, or Twitter, uh, you, we will pick 10 winners, and those winners will receive a very special Macmillan 175th anniversary prize. So please do post your comments. And now it's with great pleasure that I introduce Elspeth Pollock. Elspeth is a very experienced teacher, teacher trainer. She's over 20 years experience. Uh, she's also a Cambridge speaking examiner and she also has written materials for Macmillan. And today she would like to talk to us about B1, writing and speaking, how to combine exam technique with motivating teaching ideas. And just to point out again, the aspect of writing is going to be taken further by um, Elspeth, so maybe some questions and comments that you had before will also be developed a little bit more in yeah. the section on writing. Okay. So welcome Elspeth. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, it, I'm really pleased to be doing my first ever webinar, so I'm very excited. Um, what I've got for you today then are some essential ideas that I've developed and done recently um, in my teaching with my classes for B1 writing and speaking. I've got basically five and five, five writing, and five speaking ideas, which uh, are practical and pretty easy to prepare and hopefully um, useful for you in your classes. Well, the first one then is a question for you, because I think this is a problem that happens quite a lot and Louise has touched on it, is why do you think your secondary B1 students find writing in English so difficult? Um, so if you'd like to just have your say now, if you'd like to say, give us a word, why do they find it so hard to get writing? Why do you find it so hard? Perhaps it's something to do with motivation. Motivation, we talked about um, interest, engaging yeah. interest. Yeah. Maybe it's also lack of what to do, how to do, the blank page, what we talked about. Yeah. No, ideas. no I, ideas. I know certainly when working with teenagers uh, in my classes that it's the, the thing that they say, well, I don't know what to say mm -hmm. and that can often be a big problem when you're faced with a blank page. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we are getting answers in, as, as Elspeth said, just write short answers, what you think is particularly difficult for you, so it's hard. hard for them. Jesus, thank you very much Jesus. Now I'm going Laziness. to go, yeah, it takes <laughs> them more, than, more time than, they, than any other task, the time consuming and that was, came up in my, in my session as well, a lot of comments about how can we reduce the time, it's yeah. time consuming. Yeah. Um, also, Maria Jesus Fernanda, they are not used to writing even in Spanish. I think that can be mm. a great problem is yeah. there's no structured writing practice in Spanish in their own language and certainly these activities that we're going to do today are from working with monolingual groups exactly. and so we might be able to get something there. And from Nelly, that lack of purpose. I touched on it, but maybe we can develop it even more. Um, Margo, Margo, thank you, Jorge. Um, afraid of making mistakes yes, this year. Absolutely. This idea of having to get it right. Perfect, which is what yeah. we were trying to avoid. Um, Mercedes, motivation problems even with mother tongue writing skills, so they're similar. Okay, okay. Um, let me just quickly check to see if there's anything different. Um, they don't know how to write. Yes, lack of motivation. Things that are not used to putting their ideas into writing. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very, very thank much, thank everybody. You. Yeah, motivation and time, and class time as well. Well, so the first idea that I've got might help with that there. It's just called beginning, middle, end. Uh, now, let me explain that for you. First of all, when we're talking about B1, use your handbook, for exam handbook, for model compositions or a practice test book to get model compositions. So, for example, this is one that I've just taken and lifted from the handbook. Very easy to do. You don't have to write them yourself. So then the work involved is, first of all, you, blank, you make a copy of this and you blank out the ending and then you make another copy 
and you blank out the middle. Then you make a third copy and you blank out the beginning. So what you're doing is making three different sets of compositions there that you one group is going to write the end, one group is going to write the middle, and one group is going to write the beginning. And so this can help with motivation and ideas because your students can see that they've got the ending or the middle or the beginning and they just have to do a little bit. They don't have to write the whole thing. Um, and then what you do is after you've got your students in groups, group writing, um, to produce just a little bit, the beginning, the middle or the end, then you can regroup them, one from each group, and they have a look at the whole thing. So here's, I've got here, and it's a bit hard to see, but an example of what my students have done writing different parts of the composition and then comparing it with the original. This is a great way to encourage students to write when they don't want to do a full composition, when it seems so long um, and they just have to do part and then they can help each other as well. So that's great. a nice idea. And it's collaborative. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's the first idea that I've got. The second one um, is an email dictogloss. Now, you might have heard of a, a dictogloss. It's an activity that quite often we can do in our classes, and I'll explain in a minute if you're not familiar with it. But email at B1 level is one of the exam tasks that they have to do, and it's ideal for a dictogloss because it's short. It's quite short. It's not a long narrative, not a story. Quite short. So, if you have an email, then I have a procedure for a dictogloss, and what I'd like you to do, please, this is a have your say, is I'm going to show you, and I'd like you to produce, put the procedure in order. So, you've got A to F, just take the letters. Take the letters like and write the letters. Like we did in my session, there was a have your say and all you had yeah. to put was the letters yeah. in and order. And I'll give you a clue. The first <laughs> one is F. So you start this procedure by reading the email to your students twice. Then... <gasps> okay. Mm, let me have a look. You have I'm a look. You have a go. To, yeah. So you read the email. So F is first. F is first. You read the email aloud And so twice. then you think, what are the students doing while you're reading the email? What are the students doing? They are going to be... Ah, they're going to be listening perhaps and making notes. Right. Okay. okay so that's the F is first. They mm -hmm. read it aloud. Okay. I can see. Now let me think. I'm just going to think now because actually... Hmm. Listen and make notes, yeah. and then what? Ah, maybe some kind of comparison of notes and groups. It is group work. Mm -hmm. So it does lead itself nicely yeah. to that. Okay, we're going to get answers. I don't want to say all the answers. I don't want to hold Ooh, the space. They're the same. This F. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So they're... Right. Okay. So F. Read it aloud. C. C Listen, Listen and make, and make notes. notes. D, compare uh, notes in groups. Shall I show you the answers and then you'll be able to see <laughs> here. Here are the answers. And I'm sure you're all right, actually. Thank you very much for doing it. Read it aloud to your students in class twice at normal pace. You don't need to go fast or particularly slowly. And they listen and make notes. Now, the idea is it, it's not a dictation. Um, they're just writing bits of what they hear put them into groups when they've got their notes and let them compare their notes so that they can pool their ideas on what they heard. Then they try and reconstruct the email from the notes. Again, it's not a dictation and it works quite well. You've got lots, a bit of freedom. Then they have a look at what they thought and the original, which I took from the handbook. Mm -hmm. They look at those and then they go home and they write another email for homework. This activity, called a dictogloss, gloss, is, takes a little bit of getting used to because if your students think it's a dictation, they get very worried and a bit tense. Um, but once you mm, give them the idea that no, it's just to write down some key words that they hear and then they help each other 
to try and reconstruct the email and then they get to look at what they've done with the original mm. and it's very it's very motivating mm -hmm. as a to do mm -hmm. as an activity in and class they notice business. things don't yes. they the difference yeah. Yeah. yes is the mm -hmm. the important part is mm. b is the comparing the original mm -hmm. with what they've done the reconstruction mm -hmm. so that's an idea that you might like to use with your students taking the the original from the handbook of course or the practice test book the next one i've got i've called Sticky note compositions. <laughs> Brought some st everywhere I go. I take some sticky notes. I'm a great sticky note fan. Um, and this is as simple as it sounds. But if we're talking motivating your students in class, especially large classes, to get everybody to write, well, I've found from personal experience that this one just works. Whatever kind of composition you want your students to do, ask them to write the entire thing on a post-it. I've mm. got some examples to show you what I mean. That's um, some job adverts. They, you can see there that they've written, uh, in fact, in the class, they all wrote two letters of application for jobs because they were so excited at being able to do it on a post-it. It's so motivational. Those post-its look a little bit bigger than these. I've got mm. some more examples here. <laughs> That's my students writing them. She's using a very small blue one. Um, that the concentration and the application and the motivation in the classroom to do this is great. And then, of course, what we did afterwards was we displayed them on the wall in the classroom. Um, these 15-year-olds, uh, and they loved seeing what mm. they'd been able to write mm. because it was small mm. and it fitted on a, on a sticky note. Wow. It's amazing mm -hmm. what will motivate, but that really, really does. And you can see one girl there, Blanca, she needed two sticky notes to be able to complete it, but the others, ma the others managed with one and they were writing some informal Lovely. emails. So again, that works very nicely uh, if we're talking on how to get our students motivated to write for exam tasks, which are pretty boring. The next idea I've got is I've just called it writing games. It's actually two ideas. And this is one that I'd like us to have a go at. So you're oh. going to need you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. Okay. There's a pen. There's a pen. Piece of paper. I need um, a piece of paper, yes. And this first writing game, what uh, what we're trying to do is uh, get students involved and get the brainstorming of ideas, brainstorming of vocabulary, um, and try and get them into the task and it's individual writing practice. So this one is what I call speed writing. Mm. Now, we're going to take a topic and everybody, I'd like you just to write on a piece of paper. Don't write to contribute. It's not a have you say here. Just write on a piece of paper. It's a timed exercise. It's for one minute. I might cheat and give you a bit less. Uh, it's for one minute, you've got to write as many words as you can. It can be sentences or just random words associated with the topic of emails. That's the topic, emails. You've got 30 seconds, not on the computer, just on a piece of paper at home or wherever you are. Write as much as you can, I'm timing it, about emails, as many words as you can, starting from now. to write as many as you can. The person with the most words is going to win. Emails. It can be full sentences mm -hmm. or oh, okay. anything you want. Okay. Anything I want. Yeah. It could I'm be a, the last email I mm -hmm. wrote. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've got 15 seconds. Your writing's terrible. <laughs> Can't well, read. <laughs> Can't read it. it. <laughs> well, I can. And five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Please count your words and write, have your say. Tell us the number of words. How many words did you write about emails? I'm bad. If you get more than 30, no. I'll send you a post it as a prize. <laughs> so type no, I haven't got thirty. How many have you got? How many have you got? I, I I'm ashamed <laughs> to admit. I'm I've got twenty two. Twenty two. Can anybody beat Louise's twenty two? How many words have you written? Nineteen. Twenty six. Okay, thank you, Anna. Fine. Can any beat Anna Madara? Teresa, I know. Oh, twenty six, nineteen. So can anybody beat um, oh, Anna? 
Mm-mm-mm. 26 seems to be Anna's wow. the maximum. It's not bad, eh? That's really good. Post-its are coming your way, Anna. <laughs> what about your students? Yeah. <laughs> 20, 8. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the topic and it depends, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for doing that. Now, this works, speed writing works with your students in class because it's a game. We don't often get to do writing games um, because you can choose the topic that leads into then we're going to do some writing of emails. After you've counted the words and there's the competition element that B1 teenagers love, uh, then you get them to look at each other's list mm -hmm. of words and they can go, ah, right, okay. And we're looking for ideas, vocabulary, and we can put that together, maybe do some dictionary work and write them on the board as a lead-in to writing of the email that we're going to be doing. So, but it's a mm. nice idea to, to do that from time to time with your students. And another writing game I've got here is one that I call Glue. We're not going to do this one. <laughs> um, it's not an original name. But the idea is it's the same thing. You give your students one minute about a topic. For example, if you're going to be writing about um, living in a big city, that's your topic. You say to your students, right, I'd like you to write for one minute about living in a city, but your pen cannot leave the paper. Oh. Your pen is stuck to okay. the paper. Okay? Wow. And it's, it's great. It's good fun. So you've got one minute to write. We're not going to do it, but your students start okay. there and they're writing about yeah, um, living in a city for one minute. Now, what do you do when you can't mm. lift to dot the I's or cross the T's? No. You have to keep sticking. So you end up with things like this. Some people have gone round in a circle um, or something like this. You have to okay, put your yeah, pen curvy, to the end of yeah. the line there. Um, and it's great fun. Afterwards, when you've finished, students compare what they've written, which pattern they chose to go in. And again... It's quite creative, isn't it? Yes. And again, mm. it's a lead in to mm -hmm the activity of writing about living in a city exactly. when they share mm. what they've got with mm. each other. Uh, yeah, okay. So, and that's a picture of my students doing it. In fact, <laughs> they were doing it in circles. I put them in, so I could put them in circles in the classroom. Maybe you could do that if you've got a bigger classroom, get the ones to turn around yes. in a circle there exactly. just to compare. Yeah. The final idea that I've got for, for writing is something that's called backwards correction. Now, um, as a teacher, we spend a lot of our time collecting in compositions, student compositions, correcting them. And then what I like to do, and I'm sure you do this too, is I make a list of the sort of common mistakes. I type them out and or I put them on the board. And then I ask my students in groups maybe to correct them. Now, I think that's a great activity. Um, it's very useful to do. but it can be very time consuming. It can mm. also be a little bit um, dull if that's what we do every time. So I decided to, and also it doesn't help with the fossilized errors, with the mistakes mm. that students always mm. tend to mm -hmm. make. I don't know that it really helps. They just, mm, and then they don't look at it again. So I decided to do it the other way around. What I did was I got the list of mistakes that my students had made. I corrected them. I gave them the correct, the good sentences, and I asked them to think what mm. the mistake was. Um, we don't do this every time we do mm. writing, but we do it sometimes yes. to give it a bit of variety. And it is very interesting for them. So mm. for example, if I show you these sentences, these are the correct sentences. I hope I've corrected them. So have a look at these correct sentences can you think what, what's the typical mistake that your B1 level students mm -hmm. perhaps wrote? So mm -hmm. what's the mistake? So one of these. With one, one just yes. one of these, and don't worry about all of them. Just, yes, just look at one. one. Okay, so it's a have your say, we'll give you 10, 15 yeah. seconds um, and identify. So I don't know, for example, for me, um, if you look at number 10, number exciting, 10. Exci exci the yeah, excited moments. Or that one? Yes. Or I was thinking of the S on the adjective. Or, oh yes, the exciting moments. Yes, the 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 conjugation. Yeah, the okay. 
um, eleven, 11 past last week, past, past weekend for me, Nerva. Exactly. Thank you. Um, when I, um, you met you that yeah, oh, the yeah, last met you weekend. Oh, yeah, the last weekend. I putting think, the definite article. I think article. it was that one actually. Yes, and Andrea Lorach is saying. Um, um, I've seen present perfect versus In number eight for number eight yeah. um, number uh, number five when I am only when I'm yes when I'm number only. five when I'm alone yeah. only yeah exactly confusing that number five I, I love stay the not using the number four I yeah, love stay uh, number love four staying. yes and Thank um, you. number nine you should to come yeah the Sh shall we look I'll yes. show you these are the mistakes I don't know what number two is. I have done a new brother. <laughs> it was I have got a new brother. Number three, my students suffer with the verb enjoy. Enjoy it or enjoy mm. reflexive. Uh, that's a very common one. Yeah. And number five, you are correct. When I am only instead of when I am alone. Yeah. So this activity for writing um, really helps with uh, errors that your students make all the time. And it can make it a fun way of, for them to go, oh, and they might remember it for the next mm, time mm, and therefore mm, mm, it works. Flip it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize, those are my five ideas for um, making writing for exam practice at B1 with your students a little bit more entertaining. Um, some different ideas for you to do there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we can move on to the speaking. So B1 speaking ideas. Um, right. Uh, Often I put my students into pairs or small groups and I give them a task to discuss. So this is a typical one, um, for example, birthday present. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, choose a birthday present for this girl who obviously likes riding and there are some choices that they have to make and the students have two or three minutes to discuss together what would be the best present. Mm. When I give my students this, they're in their groups, they are not interested <laughs> and they, are, they don't know what to say. Um, they maybe say, they mention each one, cake is a good idea or a t-shirt, but there is no agreeing or disagreeing. Mm. Um, and probably that's my fault because I don't think what I've done is staged it what you were talking about in the writing, mm -hmm. staged it a little bit beforehand. So for example, um, I give my students, initially at the beginning of the year, this handout. And this handout has expressions for agreeing, disagreeing, and making suggestions, asking questions. So what they do is they put, they choose the expression that goes in the correct place. Mm. Then the most important thing is they keep this handout throughout the year and they add to it. And every time we do a task like this, they get this piece of paper out mm. and they have it in front of them. This is great for the weaker students mm -hmm. who have different problems. levels yeah. that yeah. that came up no, in the yes, previous yes, talk the mix, as well. The, the mixed ability, ability the somebody classes. sent in a question. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. this, this is what really helps um, the, your weaker students because you allow them to, when they're doing this task, they have this sheet in front of them. It, the stronger students, they can add as many expressions as they want. And so they, ca they build a whole dictionary bank of useful phrases. Um, the idea, keep that with them, reuse it and extend it. And then both weaker and stronger students have the expressions mm -hmm. there to use mm -hmm. instead of just going mm -hmm. when they're faced with it and they practice agreeing and disagreeing. So that would be the first idea. Mm -hmm. And the second one is a very easy laminated questions <laughs> basically if you have them um, for the b1 exam part one of the exam is is uh, usual questions that are quite easy to predict um, i go to the practice test books and i type out a list of all the questions there are about 20 typical mm -hmm. questions and then i put them on some card i've got some here Ooh. put them on pieces of card or i laminate them there's the, the card there and there's the questions mm -hmm. that are laminated. So I get them laminated and then I have them as a resource in class. This is extremely useful for early finishers. So if you're doing some writing, for yes. example, and a group of students have finished, then I just say, here you are, have some okay. questions, 
off you go and so they get on with it and they practice but you can also do quite a few different games with these sets of mm. questions so although it does take a little bit of your time to make the list and laminate it or cut it up if you have these in your classroom it's great mm -hmm. so and I'm going to show you some ideas that we mm -hmm. can do with them so I'm going to give Louise a choice okay and what she's going to do I'm going to give her these are the questions she's going to take one and she's going to tell us the answer and our job is to guess the question that's like um jeopardy is it right yeah, yeah. so, so okay. this is what's the question we can't see the question she's going to tell us the answer and then i'd like you please to listen to the answer and type in the question okay mm. i love horse riding i go horse riding a lot I spend a lot of time um, with horses, a couple of times a week. Um, it's great. Um, it's outdoors. I love horses. I love question? animals. Thank you. Right. Okay, sorry. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> what's the, what's okay. the question? So what's the question? What's your favorite hobby? Yes, hobby, sport. Thank you, Minerva. Yes. Excellent. Oh, you dropped it. Yes, That's fine. Leave it on the ground. What's your favorite hobby? Thank you. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. 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 So that's one idea that you can do with this set of questions. Some other ideas that you could do once you've bothered to make the sets, you've got lots of things you can do. For example, get your students to take some of the questions and actually write their answers. Because again, this can help the weaker students who maybe are he have, he has. Um, you can help them correct them so they have the correct version to practice with so it can be as simple as that or if you've got we can do what we just did with mm -hmm. louise but you can record each other on phones mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you, you can record your students giving an answer mm -hmm. and the others listen in the class and guess nice. the question mm -hmm. another idea or you could take a question and your students give two answers one is true one is oh, false okay so you could do this in front of the class or just do it in smaller groups of four five students i take a question i might be lying i might be telling the truth okay yeah. Get, yeah. great great yeah, that's great another one there and that means that they're listening even more yeah. carefully no yeah. or you can have um four people, four students in the class, all giving the same, an answer to the same question, the other students in the class can listen and then tell you which one was the best. The, mm. the mm, most convincing? Yes, the, the one that was mm, better expressed, mm. the best English, or it could be the most convincing mm. answer, could mm -hmm. be the most interesting answer. Mm -hmm. You can choose whichever. Exactly, category. Yeah, whichever no, category evaluated. you yeah. want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are some ideas that you can do with these. Keep them by your side. <laughs> at all times <laughs> okay the third game that I have is called clap click bang and this is a game for speaking um, exam practice where you have various topics so for example um, typically at B1 level you might be talking about my city mm. my school studying free time um, so I put these topics, elicit them from my students, put them up on the board. That's not a problem. And then we have three rules. I put my students in groups of four or five, doesn't matter, to discuss these topics. But the rules are, when I clap, they have to agree. When I mm. click, they have to disagree. And when I bang the table, I won't do it here because I'll <laughs> break everything, um, they have to change. They change the topic. Oh, yeah? okay. So basically your students are talking in groups of four and you take them by surprise. And if you go like that, they have to disagree with each other right. or suddenly bang the table. And yeah. it's great fun. It gets very, quite noisy, yeah. but it also is, makes everybody relaxed because it's, it's yes. a nice game and it's topics that they are familiar with and that they're going to have to speak yes. about yes. at this level. Yes. The next idea that I've got is, um, might be a bit controversial, you might not agree with it. Um, it's because I work with monolingual groups, as I'm sure you do, um, when we get to the B1 task, which is describing a photo, um, I often find that um, 
secondary students lack ideas, if they find it difficult, um, and often it can actually be quite useful to give them the opportunity to do this task in for one minute, it's describing a photo for one minute, to do it actually in, in my case, in Spanish, in their own language. Mm. Um, now, they do it in pairs, so student A describes the photo in Spanish mm -hmm. to student B who controls the timing and who writes down vocabulary. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then when it's finished, when the minute is up, then what they do is they look at the vocabulary generated mm -hmm. in Spanish in their own language and they see whether they know it oh, okay. in English. If they don't, they go to either their <laughs> dictionary or they go to their phone whichever you feel comfortable using in class, and they find out that vocabulary. Mm. Now, this is, from time to time, extremely m motivating and useful for monolingual groups because it gives them the chance to show what they know. It gives the, the weaker students who don't feel comfortable in English the chance to, again, show mm. what they can do. Um, and it also helps students to find out for themselves mm. what they need to think about Mm -hmm. and the language they need to produce mm -hmm. when they're doing the task. And often it's quite interesting because they find it difficult to do mm. in Spanish. Mm. Um, and that, that in itself is, mm. is okay because then everyone, well, if it's difficult in Spanish, then yes, that's why it's difficult in English too. And it, it relaxes, for, mm -hmm. in my experience, mm -hmm. it relaxes students and you, it stops them from panicking so much when mm -hmm. they have to talk on their own mm -hmm. for a minute, mm -hmm. which can be eternal. Because mm -hmm. we talked at the, at the end of the last session, we were talking about, there was um, the people commenting on um, the fact that writing in their own language, they don't mm -hmm. do enough of it, or they can't, or it's difficult in their own yeah. language. So you know, realising that, whether it's yeah. writing or speaking, is difficult in any language if yeah. there isn't work done on it. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, you, you might not feel comfortable um, doing this in your classroom if you have an English-only policy. Yes. If you don't, well, that's great. Don't, just don't do it. it. But it is something to do from time to time mm -hmm. that is enjoyable, uh, stimulating, and allows students to show you mm -hmm. mm, what they know about something mm -hmm. and then to find out themselves the language so absolutely so it can be useful okay the final idea for uh, speaking at b1 level is uh, called record yourself and analyze i find that this is something that um, works very nicely with shy students students who are easily embarrassed speaking uh, in english and um, but who can turn out actually to be quite good mm. um, and so what i encourage them to do is to record themselves describing the photo, for example, or answering some of these questions. I even give them to them mm. to take home, <laughs> and um, as long as they bring them back. Mm -hmm. And um, they record themselves on their phones or on their computer. If they want to have a, a microphone, they can get one as well. Um, and that recording, they play back, which is always embarrassing, but they don't do it in front of the class. They mm. do it as homework. It's a homework speaking task, mm. um, which is something different as well. They go home, record themselves, take a moment to relax, and then they answer something like this, these questions here. Um, and it's very interesting to encourage self-analysis. So is it easy or difficult to understand my pronunciation? Mm. Do I speak quickly or slowly? Yeah. Do I sound, what can I do to sound more English? Mm -hmm. Nervous or confident? Do I make? Do I hear any mistakes that I make? Mm. Can I give some examples? And how about my vocabulary? Is it good? Mm -hmm. now, just doing something very like this for homework means that then you can your students can come to class with this filled in, this handout. Um, you don't need to, as I said before, you don't need to embarrass them by playing the recording, but they can share with you and with each other how they sound it. Yes. And it's probably something that they've never done before mm -hmm. either. It's an interesting task to do at the beginning of the academic year and at the end as well. Okay. Mm. So they See can the really go how great they are. And at the end, they might even want to share some of the mm. recordings with the class. Mm -hmm. I've had that where they've said, well, mm -hmm. actually, can we all listen? Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that, that might be one idea. So, great. Yeah. so to recap the speaking, five summary ideas we have there. Those are the five things that we've done today. Mm -hmm. And then I just have a final 
task, mm. which is I've chosen six activities, three writing, three speaking that we've done today. And I'd just like you to, it's a poll, so I'd like you to look at these six and just type in the number of one that you think you might consider trying in your classes mm -hmm. on Monday <laughs> that might be useful. Uh, mm. Just give us a, a number yes. and say which one you w appeals to you. Which number? Exactly. So just check or click or tick the correct option for you, which is one, two, three, four, five, or six. Yeah. Which of these activities? Now we do realise there could be more than one activity, yeah, yeah. and you may want yeah. to do more than one. It but just to is see there one in particular that's captured? that you think you could do on mm. Monday? Okay. If you have a laminator. <laughs> I like, I really like the idea of the click, clap, bang. Yes. Because um, it's quite, it's it very It can focused, be a nice way to start it? a class as it well. It can be a lovely way to, it could be a lovely yeah. way to, to start the class. Yeah. To get them okay. involved Okay, I'm just going to, okay, people are, percentages are coming in. Oh. High percentage, so Dictoglass obviously has gone the down very well. Right. Yes. Great. 33%. Now that might go up, down, depending. The click, clack, <laughs> clack, 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 bang. We were, yeah, click, clap, <laughs> bang. Um, is that 30%? It's, and it's a great one to do as well, yes. in the, either in the beginning or the middle or the end of a lesson. Absolutely. <laughs> it's quite flexible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, the next percentage after those two um, is, where are we, 14% beginning, middle, end? Okay, just doing yeah. a part of the, the composition. Part. And that's very yeah. collaborative. Yeah. Um, the uh, um, useful phrases, 11%. Great. And then... Okay. Um, but mm, to gloss and... Yes, speed writing, 2%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, well, great. Time. Thank you very much for your okay. collaboration. Fantastic. And now, um, yes, now we're going to give them an opportunity, Ooh. the send audience, to send in your question or your comments. Or if share any ideas that you Absolutely, may have yes. for the writing or for the the, the speaking that um, um, uh, Elspeth was talking about, uh -huh, and yeah. also I was talking about writing, and maybe you have some more ideas you want to add in as well. That would be more than welcome. Absolutely. Um, okay, so Anna Belton said, "I think I will try them all." Dicta gloss number one. Great. <laughs> We'll give you about 10 or 15 <laughs> seconds to come Don't in the with any comments. <laughs> yes, the post-its. That's my favourite. I love that that's my idea. <laughs> um, okay, um, Anna Mataro saying, great activities. Thank you so for so many Thank ideas. You. Thank you, Anna, um, for your participation, for being here and sharing your ideas as well with everybody. Teresa Perles, can we see a record and, and get the slides? Well, you will get her handout. You will get I've her handout. I've typed everything up exactly. in great detail in a handout. Um, Eva Sanchez Serrano, um, no, um, Maria Jesus Peñasco, um, number six. Number six, yeah, beginning, that was middle, end. How right. yeah. do you like my sticky notes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's one from Regina Martinez who says, I have used one minute in le, um, um, in first Spanish. language. Yeah. Okay. Um, but after that minute, the other students need to say in, in second language, so in English, what has been said in the first language. So excellent. So mm. it's like a, a translation I of like it after translation. the minute. Take exactly. Notes, exactly. Um, but not Great. maybe a direct translation because it's the yeah. idea of transmitting the ideas and as well. And if it's for a minute, it will be difficult. Exactly. Yeah. Raquel says, thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Raquel. Um, Lara, the same. Thank you, Lara. Um, Ines. Again, thank you. Okay. Um, if you have a question about anything that wasn't clear, yes, perhaps. Well, thank you very much. Looking forward to getting the handout. Thank Great. you. Post it. Yes, no. Somebody <laughs> has said. Somebody has said the post it. Absolutely. Um, uh, Minerva, yeah. Minerva saying she makes them correct their mistakes, but they don't seem to improve a lot. They still make the same mistakes. But she likes the idea, obviously, of the backwards correction. Thank you, Minerva. Um, any other ideas for fossilized mistakes? Mm. Fossilized mistakes are something that we have to keep trying with. Um, my students make their own list in their notebooks of things that they um, typically individually get wrong. So it's not we don't do that as a class mm. activity. I don't get them to rewrite all their mistakes, but they get they have a little list of things that they keep getting wrong and then they know that when they've done some writing for me they go and have a look at that list and have a quick check. Mm -hmm. 
No, absolutely. So individual, not just as a group thing. Um, Elena is commenting on the size, and we know that our classes at and secondary the noise level with a big and class. the noise level, but it can be done at a, at a. It's actually the clip. I can't say it. This game. Clap. Um, no. Um, clap. <laughs> clip. No. Clip. Bang. Click. <laughs> when you when you're playing with a large class, it's actually it's all right because they are so they're talking, but they're so keen to focus on what you're going to do next that they actually don't start shouting the noise level doesn't go up too high because mm. they really they they're kind they of want, talking like yeah, that because yeah. they want to know what's coming next and actually that's not very loud no it isn't loud so they it have to loud. be waiting yes, for it so exactly. the noise level's okay actually yeah okay and um yes rosa thank you um you, you will be able to watch this rec you will be able to see the recording because there will be a recording which will make available for you as well as the handout and teresa pella says i play auction with most common mistakes that's a nice idea as well isn't it yeah that, yeah, that's the quite grammar effective auction, yeah. the grammar auction for example or yeah yeah okay great well thank you very much thank, thank you. you elspeth that's we hope that you have found these teacher training videos of real use and relevance to your classes. We would like to remind you that you can find many more practical teaching ideas and tips, articles and video clips in Macmillan Advantage. Don't miss this opportunity to continue your professional development.